Hello, and welcome to a first look at the Pi Moroni Pico LiPo board, which is powered by the RP2040C microcontroller from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It has 16 megabytes of flash storage and features the ability to charge lithium polymer and lithium ion batteries. It can do this in the identical form factor and pinout as the Raspberry Pi Pico, the one that was released earlier this year. This video will give you an overview of this board and discuss how it functions so you can see if it would be useful in your projects. But before I get into that, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a PCB manufacturer who can produce and assemble almost any PCB that you can think of. Their fast turnaround time means they're great when prototyping your projects and they offer surface mount and through hole assembly services for those more complex designs. They have even recently began offering CNC services such as 3D printing, CNC machining and injection molding so they really have every service that you need for your next project. New members get a £5 voucher when you sign up which can cover the cost of 10 two layer PCBs. Check out PCBWay by using the link in the video description. So the Pimeroni Pico LiPo is available on Pimeroni's website for £13.50 and shipping within the UK is about £3 via Royal Mail. So this is quite a costly board and during this video we're going to see if its features make it worth this price. Let's start with the size of the board. It is exactly the same size as the original Raspberry Pi Pico which was released in January this year. It comes in at 53 by 21 millimeters. However, it's slightly taller than the Pico, it's eight millimeters high. And this is due to the connectors that you can see at the base of the board. Let's discuss what this, what this board, what sets this board apart from the regular Pico. Starting on the top side, we firstly have two buttons. Just like every other RP2040 board, apart from the Arduino Nano, RP2040 Connect, we have a boot select button and this uh, button can also be used as a user input during operation. There is also a power button which acts as a toggle switch. A push of the button can shut off the board and another push will turn it straight back on. This means that a quick double press will essentially act as a, re uh, as a reset button. There are three LEDs. One indicates that there is power to the board. This is either over USB or the LiPo battery and indicates whether the board is on or off. Another LED indicates whether the battery is being charged. And the third, which has a, an exclamation point in silkscreen next to it, is a user programmable LED that you can use in your programs. It has a USB-C connector, which is another bonus over the original Pico. I think that it's great to see so many of the new RP2040 boards using these connectors. Uh, on the subject of connectors, there are plenty on this board. We have a two pin JST battery connection at the base of the board. And the polarity of this connection is important uh, and it's marked just behind, it's marked in silkscreen just behind the JST connector. There are two more connectors and one is a Stemmer QT four pin connector that you can hook up to a whole host of different sensors and breakouts that are manufactured by uh, various companies. And the last one is a three pin serial wire debug connector for if you want to do your programming over this debugging connection. Um, I've got a, a video on my channel about how to debug the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico and the process will be the same here. There's a link in the cards if you're interested. Of course, we also have the RP2040 chip on the side, which is a dual core ARM M0 Plus processor running at up to 133 megahertz in a standard configuration. Although there have been many successful overclocks, sometimes getting up to speeds of uh, 240 megahertz and some even faster. Um, it has 264 kilobytes of SRAM and supports up to 16 megabytes of flash storage. Probably the most hyped part of the RP2040 chip are the eight PIO state machines available on board. 
I'm working on a video to explain PIO, so make sure that you are subscribed if you're inter interested in that topic. There is no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi functionality on this board, unfortunately, although you could hook up the Wi-Fi carrier board that Pi Moroni make for the Raspberry Pi Pico. On the reverse of the board, we have the flash chip. This board has 16 megabytes of onboard flash, the most that the, or the maximum that the RP2040 chip can support, although there is silk screen and jumpers, which indicate that a four megabyte variant of this board will be available at some point, presumably at a slight reduction in cost. Also on the side of the board is the power circuitry, which includes an onboard regulator capable of providing 600 milliamps of current from the USB or battery input. The LiPo charging circuit includes a battery protector, which prevents any overcharging or over discharging uh, of the battery and so on. The LiPo charger can charge the battery at up to 215 milliamps when the board is plugged in over USB uh, and the battery is connected, obviously. The pin out of the Pi Moroni Pico LiPo is exactly the same as the Raspberry Pi Pico. So we can essentially overlay the Pico LiPo over the original Pico pinout design or diagram. Uh, insert editing magic here. And the only difference in the pinout is that the serial wire debug connectors are moved to a JST connector facing upwards on the Pico. In, uh, on the Pico LiPo instead of the instead of standard sort of pins and pin headers on the original Pico. This does mean that you will need to, to find or make a three wire JST connector with the correct pitch to use the serial wire debug functionality. But I don't think that's too much of a big deal when some other boards like the Adafruit Cutie Pie RP2040 remove this functionality altogether. The pins are castellated on the Pico LiPo so you can solder it directly to a custom PCB if you wished, although you will have to ensure that an area is cut out below the PCB as there are components on the reverse of the board and if you didn't uh, provide a cutout it would not sit flush. The pins are also clearly labelled very clearly uh, with silk screen and this is much better than the original Pico which had the uh, pin labels on the reverse of the board so as soon as you stuck it in a breadboard you had no idea which pin was which. As the pinout is identical between these boards, carrier boards designed for the Raspberry Pi Pico will work just fine with the Pi Moroni Pico LiPo. So this seems like a very good way to add battery charging or power functionality to your existing projects. As you power the board over USB, you can see that the blue LED uh, switches on, indicating that the board is powered and operating. Pressing the power button once will turn the board off, as you can see by the blue LED switching off, and pressing it again will simply turn the board back on. The Pico LiPo can charge both lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries. The website does not cover the voltages supported by the charging circuit, but my 3.7 volt LiPo battery works just fine. Plugging a battery in, the board powers up as expected and acts just like it would over USB, with the power switch toggling as expected. The battery, can, uh, the battery condition can be monitored in your code, so in your programs. Uh, GPIO pin 24 appears to be a digital input which indicates when the battery is charging. And the ADC on, the, on GPIO pin 29 uh, is actually measuring the battery voltage, or sorry, can be configured to measure the battery voltage. This does mean, however, that there are only three usable ADC inputs for external um, connections, just like the original Pico. With the battery connected, plugging in the board over USB will begin to charge the battery as up to 215 milliamps of current. You can turn the board off using the toggle switch and the battery will continue to charge. This power to the board is also hot swappable, which means that you could remove the USB connector whilst the battery is plugged in, and the board will not power down whilst it switches to battery power. I really like the form factor of the board, and the extra space has allowed Pi Moroni 
to put some helpful features on board, such as LiPo charging and 16 megabytes of flash. The identical pinout to the Raspberry Pi Pico makes this board quite literally a plug and play option for your projects, which I think is a very good choice, from Pi Moroni's standpoint at least. Also, I do like the toggle power button instead of a reset button, as there is now an easy onboard solution to turning off your project whilst keeping it plugged in without having to use an external switch. And however, I think the, the cost of almost three times the original Raspberry Pi Pico is a bit steep, as it doesn't seem to have three times the features. How, hopefully the four megabyte flash version comes in at a more reasonable price point to some people. So that was a quick look at the Pi Moroni Pico LiPo. I hope you found this interesting and please do leave your thoughts on this board in the comments. Do you think this board is worth the £13.50 price tag? And would you use it in your projects? If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And as always, have a nice day.